Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, those are my disclosures, probably not relevant for this particular talk. Uh, in the next 10 minutes or so, I hope to review uh, some of the techniques that we use for enteral access, focusing on the image-guided ones uh, and focusing on G-tubes, show some case examples and discuss some of the issues uh, being debated in the literature or have been debated in the literature comparing the various techniques and their utility. Um, the Society of Interventional Radiology and the American Gastroenterological Association uh, got together and published multidisciplinary practical guidelines for GI access for enteral nutrition and decompression, and these were simultaneously published in Gastroenterology and JVR in 2011. And they tried to uh, uh, propose a modified enteric access terminology system uh, where you look at the target organ, the placement route, route uh, for example, it could be transoral or transabdominal for G-tube, and the guidance system used. Uh, but then this sort of terminology system can get uh, pretty complicated. Um, I like to uh, think of things as, uh, as, as simply as possible in terms of uh, you could divide your enteral access routes into temporary or natural orifice versus permanent or transabdominal. And in the old days, uh, the G-tubes, for example, were done via open surgery or laparoscopy, uh, but now they're by and large uh, percutaneous G-tubes, for example, but percutaneous in this instance doesn't uh, necessarily mean just image guidance. This could be endoscopic, for example, PEG tubes, or uh, using image, imaging guidance. Some abbreviations we uh, know about, PEG of course you know, percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. Uh, RIG is a term that's sometimes used in the literature for radiologically inserted gastrostomy and this could either be a pigtail or cope loop gastrostomy or a POG, uh, per oral image guided gastrostomy. Some people call it a pig but we don't like to call people pigs. Um, so the POG is essentially the same device that you're putting as a PEG, but in a different way without endoscopy, just with image guidance. Uh, brief history is important for G-tubes, for example, to understand where we've been and where we've come. Um, surgical gastrostomy was a mainstay for over 100 years before Goderer and Ponsky first did the, the first PEG tube insertion in 1979 and reported in 1980. A few years later, we see reports of non-endoscopic or radiologic G-tube insertions in the literature. Uh, for example, uh, our mentor, C.S. Ho at Toronto General Hospital was one of the fathers of radiologic G-tube insertion. He published his first case in 1983. And then a decade later, we see that uh, someone, an interventional radiologist and, and a surgeon, thought of putting in the PEG tubes, but without endoscopy, calling it a POG tube or a big tube. I don't have to tell you about how to put a PEG tube in. Uh, but, uh, of course, you're going to uh, simultaneously transilluminate and palpate your finger, and hopefully you don't pass through anything else. Uh, when we put in a POG tube or a PIG tube without endoscopy and just using uh, radiologic guidance, we puncture the stomach after inflating it via a nasogastric tube, and we get retrograde access up the esophagus, and then we pull our uh, tube through and usually we can select the esophagus retrogradely without using a snare. In terms of radiologically inserted gastrostomy tube, the simplest uh, way is to use a pigtail or cope loop catheter. Uh, so we inflate the stomach usually via nasogastric tube, but sometimes just with gas granules if they can swallow a bit. Uh, puncture the stomach using fluoroscopic guidance, pass a stiff wire in, dilate the tract, usually just with one uh, 14 French Coons dilator, for example and we usually use an, a 14 French cope lube or pigtail tube, and that's a pretty simple technique. More recently, uh, we've tried to find ways to prevent uh, inadvertent tube uh, uh, displacement or withdrawal, so we've turned to uh, putting in balloon retention gastrostomy tubes uh, with radiologic technique. In the same manner, we puncture the stomach past the stiff wire. In, in this case, because the tubes are flimsier, less radiopaque, uh, we need to serially dilate things. Uh, we still put in a 14 French tube, it's a bit harder to see. As you can see, as you get larger dilators and our 16 French peel away sheet that we use here, uh, we can really indent the anterior abdominal wall and that risks uh, losing your wire axis in the lumen of the stomach 
And finally, through the PLOA sheath, we can insert the balloon gastrostomy, inflate the balloon with uh, sterile water, and then pull it back to be in position. Um, what are some of the known facts, advantages, disadvantages of the various enteral axis uh, techniques? Well, you know about the problems with pegs or pogs. Um, uh, for example, there is an infection rate uh, because you're passing through the uh, uh, oropharynx. And of course, there is a small but definite uh, gastrostomy tract seeding rate uh, with tumor, uh, which you wouldn't get uh, using a transabdominal, a purely transabdominal approach. And of course, there's problems with radiologically inserted gastrostomy tubes, specifically the pigtail uh, catheters, uh, because we, they tend to be smaller. Perhaps they, that's why they seem to occlude more, and uh, they're less secure. They don't have that mushroom bolster on the in internal aspect, they might just have a cope loop or even the a balloon retention might be a bit more, more prone to dislodgement. Controversial uh, items, uh, I bring up this uh, meta-analysis of uh, the literature uh, of over 5,000 patients that uh, published in 1995 that suggested the complication rate for radiologically inserted gastrostomy tubes was less than that for PEG tubes, and of course, uh, both of which had uh, lower complication rates than open gastrostomy, which is not really done anymore. Another issue is with radiologically inserted tubes, uh, initially it was thought that gastropexy is mandatory, opposing the anterior gastric wall to the anterior abdominal wall with T fasteners or sutures, one to four of them. But uh, nowadays, uh, it's uh, based on operator dependence, in fact, in our uh, hospitals, we don't use them at, hardly at all, only in patients with uh, ascites, for example. Uh, we, uh, our our uh, uh, center recently published a randomized trial trying to figure out which would be better, a 14 French pigtail catheter versus a 20 French pog catheter uh, in terms of uh, pain. Uh, but the only differences we found were, were that there were uh, the patients who got pogs uh, needed uh, twice the doses of midazolam and fentanyl, and they had three times the fluoroscopy time. But apart from that, uh, we saw the same technical success, room time, complication rate, and their answers on the quality of life questionnaires were the same as well. So by and large, a lot of these uh, access routes for, en uh, for, for enteral tubes um, are pretty comparable. Of course, uh, we can uh, maybe instead of dwelling on controversy, we can dwell on how, how we can help each other if you have uh, a peg that you put in and you want to change it because it's not working or it seems to be blocked but you can't find it endoscopically, then certainly imaging is uh, quite helpful. In this case, the mushroom bolster came into the subcutaneous tissues. And of course, sometimes we can even fix that by regaining access through the old tract and putting in a balloon gastrostomy, for example, that's filled with contrast. But if it was filled with saline or water, that balloon would look like that. Um, interposition of transverse colon prevents uh, insertion of PEG tubes, so therefore those patients sometimes would come to your, the interventional radiologist and we see where the colon, transverse colon is and inflating the stomach uh, helps to some extent pushing the colon down, but uh, st still we can try different angulations. If we're just under the costal margin, we can uh, angulate the needle cephalad and uh, use lateral fluoroscopy as well and even ultrasound guidance and CT guidance if necessary to avoid the colon. And, and uh, in the end, um, I think using uh, endoscopy and fluoroscopy, uh, as in this case that actually I stole from a run, uh, in putting a, a J-tube uh, into a patient who had, uh, I think, uh, an afro limb or a, a partial or complete gastrectomy, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, certainly with the scope in there and with lateral fluoroscopy, you can identify that you're in a, in a superficially located uh, jejunal loop and uh, then puncturing uh, transabdominally, passing your wire, grasping it through, and then pulling uh, transorally your PEG tube, P-E-J, um, and confirming it's in the right position without conscious extravasation shows the benefit of uh, both uh, Endos endoscopic uh, guidance and image guidance. So I think maybe the only uh, domain left frontier for image guidance to, um, to be looked at really is maybe gastrostomy tubes for your cat, which I think are still in a surgical domain.
Thank you very much for your attention.